Welcome to Electron Align and now we're going to take a look at multiple slit interference patterns. So to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, let's start with three slits and then we're going to look at N slits, any number of slits in general. So starting out with three slits, what we have now, here's an example, we have a situation, we have three different slits and when the light shines through the slits and we look in different directions, we're going to get an interesting interference pattern. Notice we still have a central maximum. And then we have another maximum over here, but between those two maximum, we have a small intermediary maximum, a smaller maximum right there on either side. Well, we'll get into why those patterns are like that. We'll get, you know, we'll go through the mathematics of that. Right now, we sim simply want to understand a little bit more about the basics of what happens when you have multiple slits. In this case, when you have three slits. Also notice that this is still the intensity of, a, of uh, electromagnetic radiation in terms of the RMS value of the electric field oscillations knows that the total electric field strength is going to be three times the individual electric field strength. Um, and that is, of course, if there's no phase angle, and we have an example of that right here. If there's no phase angle, when we're looking straight ahead, we get the central maximum right here. We then notice that the intensity of that central maximum will be nine times the intensity of a single wave. Nine times seems strange, because we'll have three slits, but the reason for that is that the intensity total when there's no phase angle is three times the, the energy intensity, or not the energy, but the electric field intensity of a single wave. And since the intensity is uh, proportional to the electric field oscillation squared, we can see that right here. When we square 3E, we get 9E squared. Therefore, intensity is nine times the intensity of a single, um, of a single slit, for example. All right. Now, the extra distance traveled by the second slit will still be uh, d sine theta, but the extra distance traveled by the third slit is going to be twice d sine theta because you can see that, that this distance is now 2d, therefore we get 2d times sine theta. Notice that the angle for both of these is exactly the same theta. Now you say, well, that's strange because it looks like this is the bigger angle than that, but not really because typically the screen where we look is so much farther away and the distance between the slits is so tiny that basically those lines are, in all intent and purposes, parallel to each other so that the angles are really the same. Even though when we draw like this, it doesn't look the same. The angles are indeed the same. Theta is the same. The phase angle is still equal to the ratio of the exit distance traveled divided by the wavelength times 360 degrees. So here we have some examples where the phase angle is zero, the phase angle is 30 degrees, the phase angle is 90 degrees, and the phase angle is 120 degrees. Just graphically to kind of get a feel of what that looks like as far as adding up the phasers. Again, notice that the phase angle is proportional to the exit distance travel of the wave in the next slit. So even though there may be many multiple slits, in this case there's only three, the phase angle is only appropriate to the extra distance traveled by the next slit when we start from the first slit. So here, if that's a 30 degree difference, that means the extra distance traveled in terms of uh, a fraction of a full wavelength, in this case would be 30 degrees, that would be the difference between two slits, and it's another phase angle of 30 degrees from the second slit to the third slit. All right, so if there's no phase angle, we can see that they're simply added vectorially, they're all lined up, so therefore the total um, electric field oscillation will be three times the electric field oscillation of one, therefore the intensity, which is proportional to this squared, would be nine times the intensity of one. What happens when there's a 30 degree phase angle? Now we have to add those up vectorially, so we can say that E total in the X direction, E total in the X direction is equal to this one right here, which would be E sub naught, plus the x component of this one, which would be E sub naught times the cosine of 30 degrees, plus the x component of that one, which would be E sub naught times the cosine of 60 degrees. So if we add those together, we get E sub naught plus, mm, that would be, let's see here, 0 0.866 E sub naught plus uh, 0 0.5 E sub naught, because the cosine of 60 degrees is, of course, 0 0.5. The cosine of 30 is 0.866. So when we add that together, we can say that in the x direction, that would be equal to uh, 2.366 E sub naught. So that would be the x component of the total electric field strength of the energy going through three slots, three slits. 
to get the y components, so we get e total in the y direction, that would be equal to 0 because there's no y component here, plus e sub naught times the sine of 30 degrees, plus e sub naught times the sine of 60 degrees. That would be equal to, let's see here, that would be 0 plus e sub naught times 1 half, plus e sub naught times 0 0.866. So it would be 1.366 e sub naught for the y component. And so they get the total value of the electric field strength of all three waves coming through the three slits with a phase angle of 30 degrees. So we get e total is simply equal to the square root of e total in the x direction squared plus e total in the y direction squared. So it's the square root of 2.366 e sub naught squared plus 1.366 e sub naught squared. Like that. I know I'm getting kind of running out of room, but let's see what that's equal to. So 2.366 squared plus 1.366 squared. Take the square root of that. We get 2.732 if you want to. So 2.732 e sub naught. And that would be the total electric field strength of three waves coming through. There's a phase angle, so you're looking at a certain angle up, so that the phase angle when you get to this point is 30 degrees from one slit to the next. Therefore, the total electric field strength is 2.732 times E sub naught. And then if we want to find the intensity in that case, that would be equal to this number, 2.732 squared times I sub naught. And so when we square the number, we get 7.46, 7.46 I sub naught. So because we're now looking at an angle slightly up, our intensity will now be diminished to 7.46 I sub naught from the original 9 I sub naught when we're looking straight ahead. Now we probably didn't draw it out right. We're probably looking at some point right here, not quite this far away. So I'm not giving you a realistic picture. This is just a general picture but we're probably looking at the intensity being about right here, about 7.46, when the central maximum over here is a total of 9i. All right, now let's say that we have a phase angle of 90 degrees. Okay, that means the extra distance traveled by this wave compared to that wave is one quarter of a full wavelength. 9 degrees would be one quarter of 360 degrees. So what would the total electric field strength be and what would the total intensity be in that case? Well, notice, if we travel from there to there, we have a 9 degree phase shift, and we have a 9 degree phase shift there. We end up over there. When we add them together, we can see that the total is equal to the length of 1. So that's easy. We don't have to go through all that. We could, but we don't have to. So in this case, since that's equal to that, we then say that the intensity is therefore equal to I sub naught. Hmm, where that come from? Well, remember, we, we say that E sub t the total is equal to 1 times e sub naught, and of course we want to square that, but 1 squared is still 1, and therefore the intensity is equal to this number. Oh, no, we can't do that yet, sorry. Not squared yet. We can then say that i, let me expand a little bit so you can see where that came from. So i is equal to this number right here, squared times i sub naught, and of course that's simply equal to i sub naught in this case. Okay, finally, let's take a look at an example where the phase angle is 120 degrees. So we have our first ray coming through the first slit. The second ray has a, has a phase difference of 120 degrees, so we draw the angle of 120 degrees, we end up over there. And then the, first, the third ray has again a phase angle of 120 degrees, and notice we get right back to where we started. So therefore, the total electric field strength at this location, when there are 120 degree phase differences, is equal to zero, which means at that point, the intensity must also be zero, which means that we must be at this location right there. The intensity is equal to zero, so we have reached our first minimum. So again, if we want to kind of take that picture, if we have this situation right here, we're looking at the central maximum right there, so that's case A. The second picture here, we have a phase difference of 30 degrees. The intensity is 7.46 instead of 9. So that would be this right here. So it would be part B. The third case, the phase difference is 90 degrees. 
So we can see that the intensity is equal to just one, which would be right about here somewhere. That's part C. And finally, when we have a phase difference of 120 degrees, we can see that they come all the way around. The total electric field strength at that point is zero. Therefore, the intensity is zero. That's this location right there. So it would be D and we'll be at our first minimum. So that gives you, hopefully, a good feeling of how we deal with multiple slits. In this case, we did an example of three slits, but we could do the same thing for four slits, five slits, six slits. Of course, it gets a little bit more complicated. And so therefore, in the future, in, the, in some videos in the future, we're going to show you how to find the mathematical solution so you can do any number of slits, and you can easily find the intensity at any point along the screen with any number of slits. That's what we're trying to get to. But at first, I want to give you kind of a feeling of what this is all about and how we determine the intensity and electric field strength at various positions on the screen relative to the number, number of slits that we have and the phase difference between the rays. And that's how we do that.